Good evening. When I was six years old, my father died of a heroin overdose, leaving my drug-addicted mother alone with six children under the age of seven. Shortly after my mother told my siblings and me the news about our father, she disappeared. She abandoned us. Our parents had recently moved all of us children out to California from Massachusetts. So we had absolutely no family in the area. We were alone. As a result, my five siblings and I became dependents of the court. One of my most vivid memories from my childhood is the day that the judge ordered that my sisters and I be separated from our brothers. My sisters and I sat in court holding hands and crying because we knew that the family we had worked so hard to protect was going to be ripped apart and there was nothing we could do to stop it. Had we been given the opportunity to speak, the judge would have learned that we had taken care of our brothers since their birth and were immensely invested in their lives. But instead, we were overlooked and disregarded because we were small children. In the blink of an eye, life as we knew it changed drastically. Our brothers were carried out of the courtroom, crying and calling for us, and we were not given an opportunity to comfort them or even say goodbye. It was a traumatizing experience, and I was left feeling scared and abandoned in the very system that was responsible for protecting me. From the age of six to 18, my sisters and I were raised in foster care. Each day presented a new struggle, whether that meant facing adversity or literally fighting for acceptance. This is where my CASA volunteer became so instrumental in, to my happiness as a child. It wasn't until I got to meet and get to know my CASA volunteer that I finally felt like I had someone in my corner, an ally, someone who would stand up for me and be my voice and would fight for my rights. He was the first person to actually ask my sisters and I what we wanted to see happen with our family. And he actually worked hard to make those things happen. He gave us hope. The only reason my sisters and I were able to visit our biological brothers in Sonoma County was because my class of volunteer went out of his way to drive us back and forth to those visits. He went out of his way to make sure that we could see our brothers. And if it wasn't for him, we would have never seen our brothers at all. He even arranged visits with our biological mother when her whereabouts were known. When we were out with him, he allowed us to have fun and be kids, which is something we seldom have the luxury of doing. The time I spent with my CASA volunteer provided me with a distraction from the chaos that character characterized my life. But he also enabled me to finally feel like I wasn't alone in the foster care system. I wouldn't say I was a perfect adolescent, but I always did well in school because that was the one aspect of my life that only I could control. When I was a senior in high school, I decided I wanted to, go, wanted to go to UC Berkeley for college. I remember sitting down with my guidance counselor and telling her that that was my goal. And she looked at me and told me that I needed to be realistic. She said that I needed to stick to applying to state schools and community colleges because that was the only schools I would get into. But my class of volunteer encouraged me to follow my dreams and to apply to whatever schools I wanted, and that's what I did. My class of volunteer even helped me with the college application process. He helped me find scholarships for college. I got accepted to UC Berkeley and graduated four years later with a bachelor's in legal studies. spending so much time in court as a child. <laughs> and so I eventually applied to law school. 
In 2010, I got accepted to Golden Gate University School of Law in San Francisco. And in May 2013, I graduated in the top 20% of my class. I also recently found out that I passed the bar on my first try. Like most foster children, I had many obstacles and hardships growing up. Why was I able to beat the odds? Well, I had a foster mother and a CASA volunteer who believed in me and who constantly told me that I could do anything I set my heart to. They taught me to believe in myself. Without their support, constant encouragement and love, I might have been just another statistic. I would like to thank Art Thomas, my CASA volunteer. <laughs> from high school to my college graduation to my law school graduation, and he's here with me tonight. Thank you.